Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to IN, a series of live online conversations with practitioners in the visual arts presented by New Local Space, a microgallery and contemporary art initiative in Kingston, Jamaica, that is a subsidiary of audio production house Creative Sounds. This episode of IN will be hosted by Nicole Smike Johnson, an arts writer and independent curator. Nicole will be talking with artist Rodell Warner about his plans for his NLS residency project, Canopy Guild, how the idea came about, the artists involved, his future plans, and much more. We'll be accepting questions throughout the segment, so please send them in as soon as you can via Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter at NLS Kingston with the hashtag in with NLS. You can send in questions via Facebook if you follow us at NLS Kingston, or you can send them through email at nlskingston at gmail.com. Nicole, take it away. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Rodell. Hi, Nicole. Afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Just to tell the audience a little bit about you, Rodell. Mm -hmm. um, Rodell is a multidisciplinary Trinidadian artist. His recent work was selected to close Art Magazine's new media programming for the 2013 Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival. He has exhibited regionally and internationally at spaces such as Alice Yard and Medulla Gallery in Port of Spain, the Cage Gallery at Edna Manley College here in Kingston, and Nerox Projects in Johannesburg, South Africa. His work was also featured in Pictures from Paradise, a survey of contemporary Caribbean photography, a 2012 publication. So, Rodel, I'm going to just get us going right away. Mm -hmm. And can you talk to me a little bit about how you became an artist? Um, I just kind of fell in with some artists. Um, I um, I was kind of well. I started making a long time ago. Started making my own um, like clothes, like t-shirts. Started stenciling my own um, uh, patterns and like drawings and stuff onto t-shirts, and um, just ended up in this whole train of um, like events that just landed me around these artists um, at uh, an ad agency I got a job at in Port of Spain here in Trinidad. Um, some guys like um, Richard Rollins and Dave Williams and Marlon Darbo and um, and just I uh, just got into this whole world of making things and um, and all the different ways you can make things. It just kind of happened. Okay, so you never went to art school? No, I haven't been, not yet. <laughs> um, and what are some of the driving themes behind your work, would you say? Um, well, it seems like every time I try to answer that, um, it becomes dicey, like it changes all the time. So, um, I, you know, I can, you know, recently, I've, up until recently, actually, I've been seeing that as like a, maybe a lack of... Um, Understanding about what I'm doing, or or a lack of um, a language to describe what I'm doing, but no, I actually think it's the coolest thing, um, because it's just um, as I learn things and as I live and go through my life and like you know work on becoming a good person and all this stuff, you know, just doing the things that you want to be good at living and. Um, and I learn things and I put it into the work, so it's just, I mean, I feel like if I give an answer, it wouldn't be true, you know, I'm just, I have no idea what I'm doing, I just, I'm doing many things, is what it truly feels like. <laughs> so it's sort of an overall practice of living better. Yeah, yeah, and um, I mean, things come in all the time, like, um, okay, so for example, there's this project called Closer, right, and the, the project is... Um, it's asking passersby on the street to make to stop and uh, make a picture with a stranger and to make eye contact. So we stop these people, we ask them to make a picture with somebody. All they have to do is look at the person, and, and we get this series of pictures. And um, that literally, literally came about because I'm walking around Port of Spain, um, afraid of making eye contact with people and wondering if other people have the same. Um, it's you, or like if they're better at it, or how they do it, or how they deal with it, or whatever. So it's like. Um, I'm just thinking about my own life and how things are going and what I'm kind of um, concerned with at the moment and something will just come up, an idea will come up of how to kind of engage it or learn more about it or think about it or share it with other people and then I, I make a project and, and I share it. 
and that's how it goes. Yeah, that's actually my reading of a lot of your work as well. It seems mm. a lot like um, distillations of, um, yeah, of experiences of living, just distilling yeah. them into um, an event or a work or a situation. So yes, I think that's actually a pretty <laughs> fair <laughs> summary. Um, but this leads into the next question. What is your process like? Where does a piece of work start? And what are the various stages of inception for you? Um, well, for a long time I was making pictures. Um, so, like primarily making pictures. So I would um, just kind of feel like I'm always on the lookout for um, a set of pictures I want to make. Um, so I always feel like... Um, yeah, just always feeling like, well, recently recently I'm working a lot more on my computer and um, using pictures kind of as a start point for um, objects and patterns and things that I'm making. So, um, again, it feels like the, the, the real answer, the true answer is absolutely anything, anyway. I don't really have a process to say, and, and then all the things that I do... Um, are so different from each other that um, it's kind of hard to draw a line from one to the other in, in terms of like how it came about um, unless it's to say that it's some kind of investigation of um, just what's happening around. So um, it feels like start point absolutely anywhere, um, <laughs> tr truly. Um, like... Um, well, now I'm making lots of patterns, right? So, like, okay, so I can tell you for, like, for, like, a project or a set of weeks. So, like, these patterns I'm making now, start point is nature images. So, pictures of, like, oh, my God. Like, sometimes you're just walking through, and I'm spending lots of time in, like, just in the bush now or near the sea. Or, and sometimes you're walking through some bush, and you see some kind of, like, leaf form or something that you just could not have imagined, you know, um, seeing things that you could not have. You know, you thought, you know, you think you know all of what trees do, you think you know all of what plants do, you have no idea, and, you know, you see this thing, and then you take a picture of it, or it could be the colors of something, um, an animal, or, and then, and then uh, that picture becomes this kind of um, initial point for a set of manipulations that become a pattern, or a, a gif, or um, whatever it becomes, you know. Okay, and, and a lot of those patterns are the basis for the Canopy Guild project, correct? Yeah, definitely. So that's what people would have seen. Okay. Um, but I, I want to ask you one more thing before we move on from process. So how do you know when a work is done? I mean, I can understand what you've said in terms of not knowing when it started, but what what lets you know, okay, I'm at, I'm at um, a final point or a pause point even with this particular uh, work or, like I said, event or situation, whatever, whatever form you're working with. Yeah, um, I think that's a really good question because I also, I mean, it seems like all my answers know is this. I don't know, right? But, um, <laughs> but man, the coolest, one of the coolest things I realized recently, right, is that um, it seems as though you only imagine that something is done. You only think it's, or you, or you kind of arbitrarily decide that it's finished. But, and especially with patterns and these things that I'm making recently, it's like a stopping point is arbitrary because at any point that I stop at, um, when I decide, okay, this is it, this is the work or whatever, that thing can absolutely become the start point for the next thing. And then even after that, you decide that it's done or you've done what you wanted to do, and then even that can become a start point for the next thing. So... Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, you take a picture of a, a beautiful um, plant or something with some interesting colors or some cool variation of some something that you've seen. And you can decide that picture is a thing. You can go and exhibit that or you can, you know, say this is my work or whatever, but then you can take that picture and you can um, harvest the colors from it and map them onto something else. And you can decide, okay, this object that I've made is a thing and I'm going to exhibit this or I'm going to get this 3D printed or whatever. I'm going to make something cool out of this. But then you can animate that. And then you can say that the animation is a thing, and then you can um, you can take the frames of the animation and make something out of them, and then you can print that onto something else, and so it goes. Mm -hmm. And um, 
so it seems um you know now with the things I'm making now it's any stopping point seems um completely arbitrary and um which is which is why it's kind of hard to decide on a show like decide when you're gonna show something because it's always in motion you know yeah yeah. Well, I think we'll probably pick up back on some of these things later in the conversation. But mm -hmm. for now, um, I know that you've done a number of residencies across the Caribbean mm -hmm. and even as far afield as South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, how have these experiences fed your practice? Man, um, every one of these experiences has been extremely rich. And, um, you know, the coolest thing about kind of dropping yourself into or, or, or being dropped into um, communities of um, artists and musicians and stuff is that uh, all these things that people have worked out already, I mean, which is what uh, culture is, right? Like all these kind of solutions that people have worked out, like you just kind of get to pick up, all of a sudden you get to kind of drop right into all these other people's um, ways of doing things or ways of working things out or so... I mean, I, I mean, I haven't been to school formally, but this feels like my education, you know, like, um, I know, I know, like, I kind of have um, been able to do so many things because I've been exposed to people doing different things. So, I can, you know, while, I, while it's difficult sometimes to specifically pinpoint, I got this from there and I got that from there, um, I definitely know how valuable it's been to kind of just been... Um, privy to all these different scenes, like all these different groups of people who have their own thing worked out, you know. And I suppose with whom you maintain relationships. Yeah, definitely. And um, and who I also, um, which is a cool thing about it, right? Like who I also get to be somebody too, like who I also get to um, yeah. share with, right? And um, that exchange thing is just one of the coolest things. I was actually thinking this the other day, like, you know, the, I think the absolute coolest thing about um, working as an artist is just getting to meet so many people who are interested in living in all these different ways and, like, working it out, you know, like, just doing cool stuff and enjoying life and being free and sharing that. And that's, I mean, I don't know how else I would have got to meet so many cool people. Nice. And what are some of the things that attract you to this particular residency? Um, well, there was kind of a challenge to make an interesting proposal. And, um, well, there's a lot of cool people working in Jamaica. And um, while the call for, um, while the call was out, and this was what, like a year and a half ago or something, um, I was kind of aware that it was like because I was also in Jamaica um, at the time, and I was just imagining how cool it would be to to work with all these people around. You know, um, there's a lot of cool people working in Trinidad too, but you know, to be in um, a new scene is always very exciting. So, mm -hmm. I just just imagining being there and um, and then and then and then the and then the forests and the hills and stuff are like super lush and like just ridiculously textured and like varied. So I mean, just that also. I mean, I just I'm just very affected by the place and the people. So um, it just feels good. Like it's something I want to do. Yeah. Well, we'll be very happy to have you. <laughs> um. Okay. So your career uh, mm -hmm. is a pretty varied one. It includes elements of photography, GIFs, video, sound, installation, design, I'm sure I'm leaving stuff out, um, and most recently performance, right? What you did um, as part of New Media TTFF. Mm -hmm. and with each new body of work, you seem to be playing quite freely with media. And you mentioned some of that earlier, just in terms of your approach to your making. And, and you know, the relationship between each piece. You know, you kind of add, subtract, layer. Um, these different mediums and forms. Mm -hmm. you talk to me a little bit about your relationship with medium and if you could connect that to how that relationship feeds into Cannabis Guild and its engagement of media. That would be. Okay. Um, so my relationship to media, well, 
I think and um and and more the more you know the more I spend time online um and like I, I got on Twitter a couple of like maybe in the last year and um just being in so many you know getting to see so many people's um brain thoughts um I'm realizing that what it is is a uh, it's a kind of a generational thing I think right where um it's like an internet thing I think where you're just exposed to so much um stuff um. Exposed to so many like uh, different ways of doing things or making things. Yo, excuse me one second. It's like uh, somebody downstairs making lots of noise, and I just want to ask them to um, stop. I'll be right back. Yes, I guess life happens. So we'll be back. Oh, with you. sorry about that. Like, um. Okay, great. Now almost done. Okay. Um. So yeah. So like, um, and this is the thing. Like when okay. So so I used to, I used to um stencil t-shirts, right? And then um. And then I got uh Photoshop at some point to like learn how to do, like manipulate images better. And then I started working at a print tree, and I kind of learned a little bit about um, how the print process works. And then I got into um, advertising, and I started hanging around with all these artists, and um, learned about photography, and learned about um, a little bit of web stuff. And um, but but at that point, got online and like saw how all these people over the world doing so many different kinds of things, and seeing really the fluidity between all these different um, mediums. Right? Like, it's not really you don't really have to be a this or a that, or you might think you're a this or a that, and you might find that you're something else, or that the two things are not separate at all. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how I feel things work, like not just art, like I feel everything is kind of like that. So, um, so relationship to media is just like, it's not so important, it seems, right? It seems that what you actually make something out of is not so important. More important seems to be um, what you're trying to communicate, and then so whatever is the best way to communicate that, then you go about it that way. So the cool thing about, I think, for this project, working with all these different people, is that you're going to have all these different people with all these different things to say, and we're going to like work with the same material, but you're going to get all these different expressions, and um, that's going to be really cool. Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure if I answered the question or if I got distracted. <laughs> no. no I, I, what I'm reading from what you're saying is that it's sort of in the way that I might consider myself uh, an interdisciplinary thinker, so that yeah. I'm not I'm not so attached to saying, oh, um, I study or or I'm in I'm an art historian or I am a an anthropologist or I am a whatever. Mm -hmm. I can just, it's very comfortable for me to say interdisciplinary, and it's it's extremely uncomfortable for me to try to occupy any particular discipline. Um, so it sounds like what you're saying in terms of that fluidity between media is that you're kind of having the same kind of conversation that yeah that I have about disciplines in the space of media. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, we actually have some questions coming in already, but okay. I'm going to leave those um, to the end, if that's fine. Okay. Or you want to take the question now? Um, either is cool with me. Um, yeah, let's take it. Let's take it. That sounds like a cool idea. All right, let's mix it up. So the question is this. Mm -hmm. In a world where self-aware focus is prized, how does your particular approach, approach which is very mm -hmm. open in a singular way, how does it thrive? How do you thrive creatively? Well, what um, what happens is that since um, since since I'm making so many different kinds of things, um, I actually end up getting connected to lots of different kinds of people who are doing different kinds of things, and um, and it just seems like instead of going on a line, I'm going on a web, and um, and that's cool because um, yeah. because I get I get to play in lots of different spaces and I get to play in lots of different areas and um, and I get to feel like I don't have to stop or I don't have to stay in line. I, I get to feel like I can, it, will, it, it just every time it happens, every time I get connected to somebody who's who's interested in something that I, I th think was like uh, a kind of offshoot thing and then that offshoot thing has the potential to become like the main thing 
or like the thing that people seem most interested in and that I should um, maybe, uh, that there's opportunities to continue doing. Um, you know, that stuff just makes me very like excited. Like you just feel like, you know, you can just go ahead and just do your thing, you know. And, um, so that's it. That's what it feels like. And um, like, for example, like lots, like right now, um, a lot of what um, might be getting some interest is these gifts that I'm making, right? Mm -hmm. um, two years ago, um, I started making hey, gifts. Model for our audience, you want to just say a little bit about what a gift is, real quick? Oh, so, so gifts are these um, little animations that you that run automatically on web browsers. Okay. So it's it's an animation that you make and um, you put it online, um, but you don't have to hit play or anything. It just it just runs, just like a just like a JPEG, like a picture would load. This image just loads, but it's a moving image, so it runs online. Mm -hmm. And um, since Tumblr got popular uh, a couple of years ago or recently, um, there's been this kind of culture of um, playing with gifts, making gifts, and now everybody online is like kind of just. I mean, uh, these moving images online are just very common now and like um, just part of like internet culture or like part of world culture, it seems. Um, and so, um, like a couple of years ago, I started getting into it a little bit. Um, but no, you know, just thinking that it's kind of like a, a, it's a little a little thing I'm doing, like playing with, you know, on the side of my like um, art practice as a photographer or whatever. Um, and um, an opportunity came uh, with uh, Ria McNamara, who's an artist in Canada, um, with a show that she was doing to join a group of artists who were making these little anim these animations, right? These gifts. Mm -hmm. And um, and I joined this group of people and um, and just started playing in the way that they play. And you know, the coolest thing I learned about uh, one of the coolest things I feel I learned from dealing with this group of artists from all over the world who were doing these little animations is just how free you can be with whatever it is you're making. You know. So um, anyway, my point was that I am. Um, so I started doing these things, and now it's like um, I go and I propose a show to somebody, and um, I want I want to show some prints that I've been working on or whatever, and they're like, okay, well, um, is it going to move? Like you know, like um, you want to see gifts, you know? <laughs> and that and that was just like a little, like a side thing, like a thing that I was just kind of playing, and and that and that's how it goes. And so now, okay, so if if I want to do prints, um, I can do that, and I can go ahead and you know um, make my pictures and whatever. But then over here on this side, there are people who are really interested in seeing some animations, and then yeah. over here there's some people who are really interested in like um, the interactive way um, some of these things um, can work. So they want to set something up from for an audience, mm -hmm. and I don't have to commit to any of these lines. I can exist as myself, do the things that I love, and then and then these things just kind of go off in their own directions, and it's more of a web, and um, and that feels very good. Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah. I, that's definitely. I like the 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 web as opposed to a line idea. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, well, to return to our conversation, which luckily feeds nicely off of this question. <laughs> nice. Uh, so. In what you've been talking about, you mentioned Closer, for example. And mm -hmm. it seems like you have a real interest in sort of bridging populist, interactive, and performative concerns in your art. Mm -hmm. um, Closer, for example, which you did in South Africa and Trinidad, was mm -hmm. about welcoming complete strangers on the road into a situation where they'd have to interact with each other. And mm -hmm. then the range of responses which came from that, some of them awkward, um, some of them sort of averted, some friendly and very familiar right, with these people that you don't know and mm -hmm. that don't know each other, gave us a sense about the public and how people are interacting, interacting with each other in the public space. Mm -hmm. so that's what I mean by bringing together the populist, the interactive, and the performative concerns. Do you think that Canopy Guild has some of the same concerns? If you do, how so? Yeah, um, I think it definitely does. Um, because in a way, okay, so with um, with closer, it's kind of that was kind of about um, my in my kind of experience with making eye contact in town and wanting to see how other people um, do that or or um, handle that or um, yeah, what other people's experiences of that would be. And um, with this project with Canopy Guild is is it, that that element of it I think is there like kind of wanting to see what other people would do with this material. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's less of a general public kind of thing and more of a kind of artists, designers, makers kind of thing. But yeah. I think it's still it's still um, it's still there, you know, and. Um, 
and also it kind of engages a look like a like a particular space. So it's, we're making images of Jamaica, and we're kind of and it, and it, and or, or even of the Caribbean, or you know, um, like like when I was doing closer also. Um, that was in 2009, and one of the things that was happening around that time is I just got introduced to, um, or started working around Dave Williams and Richard Rollins, right, these two artists. Mm -hmm. And um, lots of the conversations that we had around that time had to do with um, being in Trinidad, you know, and um, I was like, I might have been 20, what was I, like, um, I don't know, like 22 or something, and um, lots of the people I was hanging out with and lots of the people my age were kind of like um, not interested in Trinidad at all. Like, everybody just wants to get out of the country, everybody wants to go to the States or whatever, yeah. and... Um, and like the the idea of the place in your mind, like your idea of the place that you are from or the place that you know you are, is this idea, uh, this this hateful idea, and it also affects or like um, it also influences how you think about yourself, you know. And I meet these older fellows, and they're like, no, it's not like that. Like like they love the place, and they can tell you all the reasons why they love the place. You just never knew. You just never heard about it. You you never you never knew that there was so much to appreciate. Mm -hmm. So lots of my projects at that time was were about were kind of um from those conversations were kind of like um kind of about all the things you could appreciate right um mm -hmm. so even um and then and, and then how and then yourself or like yeah. so um more recently bush that's came up right mm -hmm. sorry because this is how the initial bush images came up out of yeah that's right. Yeah, exactly, and that, and then, and I can pinpoint a, a, like literally a conversation with with uh, Dave Williams and and Sean Leonard, who um who runs uh, Alice Yard, um, and they're talking about um situations where you know people move away from, like literally move out of the way of some bush or something to take a picture of themselves because you don't want any bush in your background. And when this is the stuff that the place is made of, and it's like this perfect metaphor for like this kind of um self-loathing that way, like that's very um common in the Caribbean or. Like, I don't know. Um, so started taking pictures of Bush specifically, um, you know, especially if I didn't like how it looked, and then paid attention to it, give love to it, and then see what can come out of it. Um, and then all this stuff has come out of it, right? Like, um, like, I mean, so um, I forget the yeah, question. Now become a, a, a sort of you're taking it multinational now, so you are doing that. Yeah. Interview, thinking about that in terms of Trinidad and now coming to Jamaica. Right, and then it's, and so it's really exciting now to kind of engage in new space um, in that way, and then and then not just me doing it as like somebody from somewhere else, but but actually the, the people who are from the space also. So like, and we can just like collaboratively, collaboratively, um, just kind of play with the images of the actual space, and then just um, present that to people from the place, in the place, and it's like, this could be clothes, this could be stuff that you could wear, you know, you could wear, wear your own mountains, you know, like, wear <laughs> your own bush, like, it could be very cool, you know? Okay, so, I mean, so we're already talking about Canopy Guild, and a question actually just came in about this as well. Can mm -hmm. you tell me, about, tell me about your collaborators, tell me how you chose the collaborators, mm -hmm. and, um, you know what, what? What what kind of dynamics are you looking forward to creating between you and the collaborators? Between the collaborators, the co collaborators themselves. Mm -hmm. How how do you plan to go about that? Because we had a an a question from the audience about this specific thing, but mm. I think it's also leading out of what you were just saying. Mm. What, what is your vision for how the collaboration will work and who you will be collaborating with? Okay, so um, there's like an initial short list of collaborators, um, just um, just some people that kind of um, have an idea already of how they kind of work, and that we've kind of asked or invited, um, and they've said yes. So this is like um, Ayana Revere, who's Trinidadian, and she's a designer. Um, there's Ai Yoshida, who's a Jamaican designer. There's Leisha Johnson, who's a Jamaican painter. There's Storm Salter, who's a Jamaican filmmaker. Um, there's some other people, too, that I'm, I'm very interested in getting in touch with. We just haven't got to that stage yet. Mm -hmm. um, there's Afifa Azza, who's um, a DJ and kind of a sound artist that I worked with in, um, in Jamaica last year. Um, and, well, so and as far as um, how we're going to collaborate goes, that still is very much um, open because, I mean, you can be working with different people and different processes, and it's kind of hard to say right now. Um, what I'm thinking of for myself is um, what I know right now that I'm going to do is just initially get there 
make some images and, and produce some material to start. Mm -hmm. And then I guess it's going to be more of a, it's going to be a more... Fabric, right? Yeah, as in literal fabric. And also, but then before the fabric gets printed, because it's digital printing, um, this is this is going to be, be digital patterns and um, just other kinds of images that I will make. So I'm going to have all that material there. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and that that's like the starting point. So that's like the material that we're going to start. And then, and then we can engage the different practices of like these individual um, artists and designers um, to see what we're going to come up with. And I mean, that's the creative process. I mean, but I mean, again, it's like um, it's like at what point is the starting point? You know, like or yeah. like somebody but, um, who have been talking to for a period of time, and some of them you'll be engaging for the first time. Yeah. When you get here, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Hmm. All right. And and do you have any specific hopes for what they bring to the table? This is coming from the, the question from the audience. In terms of the artists you're working with, do you hope Specific that hopes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm um, in a word variation. Because, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I know what I would do, but then there's all, these, all of these people do their own thing, you know, and they're just going to engage this material in their own way, and we're going to end up with this mad... This mad set of like just varied. I don't know what the hell we're gonna end up with, right? But we're just gonna have some cool stuff. We're gonna have I don't know. And then, and then you know, when we start to see what we're gonna, when we when we start to see what we're making, then we can, you know, I mean, the whole thing is a process. And um, yeah, I'm just excited about the possibilities of all of these variations, you know. Mhm. Mm um, yeah. Another question from the audience, but I I, I also want to know. How did the name Canopy Guild come about? Man, um, so Deborah needed a name to, to like promote the thing and all that, right? And I'm I'm real bad at naming things, right? And maybe this is a bad name, I don't know, but I kind of like it now. But um, I like it a lot now. But um, I've been tweeting a lot recently, right? Like in the last year or so, like I've been tweeting a lot. And the coolest thing I learned um on Twitter, or learned from being um on like just is um that okay, there's the things that you can write, but then there's also the stuff that you're thinking that you have not written. There's like this stuff that's going on in your head that you did not consciously come up with, and I'm really interested in that stuff. Like that, those are like the, those are the things that I tweet, right? And they're like the things that people respond to, and like um, I love that. They can't even call it a process. Whatever the hell it is, it's like a reflex. It happens. Like you, you find sentences in your head, you find words floating around, you find things going on in your head that you now become aware of when you when you weren't paying attention. So. Um, Deborah needed a, needed a name for this um, project. Um, it was kind of hard to name because I wasn't sure exactly what we were going to do yet. Um, but as I was kind of walking around with the images of what I do have so far in my mind, these two words came up. And then I looked them up, and then it seemed like the perfect words. Let me look. Let me, let me, let me do it right now. Like, I'm just on my phone. I have my dictionary app. Let me look up these words. Let me, let me like, I mean, they were, like, two perfect words, and I didn't even make them up. They just came up, you know? So, um... So you you weren't clear on the de the definition before the words came to you? No, no. Uh, the the words came up, and then um, and like I kind of had loose you know loose idea of what they mean. But then to look them up, the like the very specific like this the the very specific words that we use in the uh, definitions, just mm -hmm. were like they were, they were just perfect. I was like, oh, this is exactly what I have to call this. So um, canopy. Let me just look it up right now. It says canopy, a covering usually of fabric supported on poles, suspended over a bed, through an exalted personage, a sacred object, um, overhanging projection or covering as, as a long canvas awning, stretching an ornamental roof like projection, um, also called crown canopy, crown cover, the sky. Like all this stuff is like, so, okay, so that's, that's canopy, right? And then, um, and then I look up the word guild, which I have a kind of loose uh, understanding of from like playing games and stuff, but like guild is an organization of persons with related interests, goals, et cetera especially one form for mutual aid or protection. Um, any of various medieval associations as of merchants or artisans organized to maintain standards or to protect the interests of its members and that sometimes blah, blah, blah. and then there's a botany, a group of plants. I'm looking at the word guild and there's botany, a group of plants. Um, yeah. As, yeah, it's like um, as parasites oh, having yeah. a similar habitat or having a similar habitat and of growth and nutrition is what it says. No, when I think canopy, I think about like rainforests. Yeah. I didn't even think of those definitions that you gave me, which are also very relevant. But I was thinking yeah. about like a rainforest canopy, which I think is very relevant to your images. So that's that is very important to us. Yeah, and Can then uh, there's no such thing as coincidence. Yeah, but then uh, everything is coincidence, and then uh, and then the no and then nothing is coincidence, right? <laughs>
Um, but it was also cool that um, it's a collaborative project, and this just feels like very much like a group. You know, it just feels very much like it says group. It just says group of people. So I just love that very much. Um, and and I felt like you know one of the things I was also thinking about is that when I named this thing, um, there's all these other people who are going to have to kind of um, say these words and um, communicate this name to to people, right? Yeah. And um, and it just felt like cool. It just felt very. Um, I was happy to be able to have something that that suggested this group interaction in the first place to be the words that start the whole thing. So nice. All right. Um, moving to a slightly different space now. Mm -hmm. But do you consider yourself a digital artist, and how do you interpret that term? Um. I guess yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, going against all that we've said so far, about, well, yeah, not. it's like in there. It's one of the things, you know, it's included. <laughs> so yeah, you know, definitely, that's one of the um, webs in the web, you know, one of the strings okay. in the web. So definitely. And how do you interpret that term, digital artist? Just because, I mean, if there are young artists listening in, I think it's really important to explore all these different ways of making now. So how do you think about being a digital artist or, or, or what do you think is the potential or significance of that term? Um, well, what I think is the potential or significance, I think the coolest thing about it is that um, it kind of just connects you to what feels like the vibe of the present moment, right? Like, like I don't know if this is just, I mean, this may be really subjective, but it just feels to me like the internet and you know just working in this way digitally, just working digitally is kind of like I mean we're in the information age or whatever, right? So this is like the thing that kind of defines us, right? Like, I mean if you are an artist um, anywhere around this age or under a certain age, like you probably you probably automatically you're probably gonna be, I mean you're probably digital even if you don't try, you know? Mm -hmm. um, um, and it's so that's that's what I think is like. It just kind of connects. Connects. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know if that. Um... No, that, that 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 makes sense. Okay. You can take that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, and what about your other projects? Are you working on other projects currently? Um. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things. Um. There's um. There's well. There's. I have a set of um texts that I'm turning into posters. That's one project that I'm working on. Um, I have a set of images that I've made that I'm making prints of. That's another project. There's, um, I'm working on some gifts. There's a, there's a show coming up um, later this year in Washington at um, Transformer Gallery. Mm -hmm. um, that show float. Um, and I'm working on some gifts and things for that. Um, but really, it's just like um, my computer is just this soup of all kinds of things going on, and it's I'm, I'm I'm the one also waiting to see what comes out as like a thing, what what gets decided as like an end point, like okay, this is something we're gonna show this. So I'm I'm working on I'm, I have this soup, and like there's all these things in the soup. That's how it feels. That's what it feels like. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to be able to say to be like more concrete and say because even for myself, right? I mean, I would just love to be able to say I'm doing this specifically and that specifically. I'm doing project but, A, B, and C. Yeah, it's but it's, X and N point exactly. two. That would be so cool, right? <laughs> to just be able to say that. But um, I cannot say that right now. I just have I just have a number of kind of I just have this this gradient of things going on going on. And are there any um any other shows? You mentioned float in. Mm -hmm. Are there any other shows that you're you're, you're showing? Oh yeah, there's a sh there's a show called Fight in um in Berlin that's coming up later this month that I have sent a video to. I kind of took a risk and sent a video, um a video that I made. Um, so there's this show. Um, my friend uh, Joel Thompson that I met in South Africa. He's a Canadian um, artist working in Germany, and he is um he is. Uh, curating this show with some colleagues of his and um, invited me to participate and um, so the way that this show is set up is that they have two artists and a, two visual artists and a writer 
and um, they just there is no brief you except that you know what's going to happen with the work, which is that it's just that these three things are going to be put together um, for a one night exhibition. So um, they give you the, the dimensions of the screen that they have, and um, mm -hmm. and they've told me who the other artists are that I'm working with, or who or who are going to be shown on that night, and I just have to create something. Um, and you know, the show is called Fight, so it's, it's kind of about the these things being put together, and what connects and what doesn't connect, and all that stuff. So there is that. Um, there's also um, a project with Arc Magazine and Volta New York called uh, Metanoia, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. yes, and um, so I kind of um, just kind of committed to doing that, also participating in that also, and um, with a host of like. Like a bunch of artists that I really admire a lot. Yeah, like, oh, the list. It looks like a really interesting show. Yeah. yeah. So, um, also just working on um, finalizing what I'm doing for that and that kind of thing. So, yeah, there's some things coming up and it feels like a really full, rich year is going to be, you know. Great. Great. And, um, and so, you know, we've had an eventful week with uh, Kickstarter. So yeah. How do you feel about Kickstarter as an option for external sources of funding, and how has the experience been for you so far? Well, it's very cool. Like, I'm, I mean, I have to say thanks to uh, you and Deborah mostly because you're the ones that have been doing lots of like most of the communication about this um, campaign, right? And I mean, like, so I've um, you know, it's not like communication is not necessarily my forte, but um, you know, I would say in that kind of way, but um. You and Deborah have been working so much to like just get all these different people aware of what's going on and like um and so many people have contributed and now it's like almost I done. know like, it's just two hundred dollars like, to go yeah man it's, it's friggin overwhelming like I'm so happy <laughs> yeah and like I mean it's that's so crazy oh now it's at two seventy five right so there's just like um was that hundred hundred and twenty five dollars to go that's crazy ah oh, awesome um, yeah so it just feels really good and um it's cool because. Um, you know, I'm sure at some point Deborah must have been like, she's gonna do this project. She's gonna like open the space, have this residency, and just gonna crowdfund it. And people are going to want this thing to happen. They're gonna make it happen. And that's exactly what's happening. And that's what happened um, last year too with um, Wilma Wilson's residency, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of cool to see somebody say, "I'm going to do something," and not have money be uh, a thing. You know, like just like to hell with it. Um, we're just gonna get the wood out, and people are going to make this happen, and that, that's that's the coolest thing about it. Yeah, that's so cool. No, yeah, I mean, um, it definitely has its stress points. I know that Deborah has has really championed this all throughout. Um, mm -hmm. But I I do like this part when you you get to see a community. Um, <laughs> manifest itself in 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 this thing. You know what I mean? I think it's a really that Kickstarter in general is a really nice way of manifesting community, um, mm -hmm. which is so needed right now. So, so yeah, I, I guess with mo as with most things, there's a lot of stress and a lot of pressure, and then you get to this point where it's just like, yes, <laughs> yeah, this is happening. Yeah. This is it's real. happening. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think that that is fantastic. Yeah, man. Um, and of course, thank you so so much to the donors who have contributed so far. You know, as I said, this is really important. Let us keep manifesting community. Oh, and I just see one more question coming in here, Rodel. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us more about the posters made of text? Okay. Um, your, your projects that you're working on right now. Yeah. Well. Yeah. There's. Um. Okay. So. So this is, I mean, okay, so one of the things that's been happening, like a big deal in my life this year is Twitter, right? I mean, um, I did not know what Twitter was until this year. And what it is... Thank God, I'm, deaf. I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I mean... I mean, I knew of I knew of it, of course, and like what it was, like, but but the culture of it, oh my God, the culture of it, like, it's a whole. There's universes going on on Twitter. There's whole universes going on, you know. There's whole worlds on Twitter, and um, and so much of it is like it's just thoughts. Like this is the closest thing so far, I think, to like um, just being in people's heads. Just the whole world, everybody just being in each other's head, you know. It's yeah. just um, it's insane, like. And uh, there's so much poetry, right? And um, and and you know, you see people talking about the fact that everybody's a 
poet, you know, like, people are coming to this realization that, like, and, and language, like, I've learned so much about what language is, and, like, I mean, I've learned so much about so much on Twitter, right, because there's all these people expressing themselves, so, um, but, you know, after, after I kind of started and um, tweeted all the things that I could tweet, um, <laughs> <laughs> I started realizing, I started noticing the stuff that's happening in, in between my thoughts, the stu- the, you know, the, the, the kind of reflexive thoughts, the kind of things that are being processed or being in words, in language, right, text going on in my head that, um, that is not nothing, you know, it's, that is, yeah. uh, and so I started kind of writing, um, writing these things down, or those became the things that I tweet usually, you know, um, I do lots of, I mean, I have lots of bad tweets, like lots of really horrible tweets where I'm just trying too hard, and that's usually when I'm thinking too much, but the really good tweets are like, I can't even take credit for them because they're just going on in my head, right? Anyway, um, there's a set of texts that I have. There's nine of them, and they each have nine words in them, and I've thought of none of it. Um, I have not written this stuff. It's just been, like, there in my head. And um, this is the stuff that I'm making these posters out of because they feel true. They feel, like, kind of, like, um, timeless or, like, um, poetic or whatever, and um, I can feel great about it because I don't have to take credit for it, right? Like, I don't have to worry about... I mean, they just... Okay, so I can read a couple of them. But also these things, what they are, is... Um, is I, I, what I, Before I wrote them down and decided I'm going to make a show of it, what they were were things that I found happening that I took on as kind of like mantras or just like little guiding sentences that I could just keep in mind and they would like help me kind of move through whatever variation of life I was going through at the moment. And then I would forget about them quite naturally and another one would come up. And so it's been going. And then mm-hmm. I noticed that, it, and then I noticed the kind of like, I mean, it's like music, right? They have a kind of rhythm. Um, and uh, and I realized that they all have nine words in them. Um, that was a cool thing to realize. Oh, so you realize so, that? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm telling you. Nine of them, it wasn't like yeah. you, you didn't enforce that on yourself. No, there's a sentence, and then, and, and I love it, and then um, and I count on my fingers, and then there's nine words, and I go, wow. <laughs> So, okay, question. Do you, yeah. um, is this related to, is this related to the, you did some similar work for, um, that project you did last year at Alice Yard, Year of the Snake, right? You, you had some right. posters right. with, ter- with phrases. Is it right. related to that work? Yeah, kind of. Um, but a lot of that stuff was stuff that I felt that I wrote, and I really, I, I mean, I mean, I maybe I shouldn't say this now, right? Because maybe it's like, but I really hate that little thing I made now. I really don't like it so much. <laughs> Um, I once heard, um, I, there's a, there's an expression, um, there's an expression that I heard online recently, um, this guy Alan Watts was talking about it, and he's, it, the expression is when something stinks of zen, and some, it's when you trying so hard to be chill about something that mm-hmm. is just the opposite, you know, and, um, I kind of feel like that little book, like, I should have, like, if I had to do that project over, and I have done visions of it since, I do it without the text, I do it without the instructions, because, um, it's just too much. But these, I don't feel that way about because I'm not, I don't have any motive. It's just stuff that I kind of put in my head that I like. Mm-hmm. Um, like, um, like there was one day, I, one day, okay, so I remember one, so I'll tell you a story. It's a short story. One day I'm at work, I'm in this office, right, and I'm like, I've been in the office for days and days, it feels like, for one long day, it feels like, right? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And I need to go outside and just get some sun or something because I'm just dying, right? And I go outside and, like, walk around the block, which feels like going to, like, I mean, it just feels like an animal in a cage, right? You can't walk too far. You walk around the block, right? You don't want to be, you know? <laughs> so, I, so I walk around the block to get some exercise or get some sun or something. And, I mean, the sun was high in the sky, right? The sun was high. And um, and I felt like the sun is, like, I'm looking at the sun and I feel like it feels very, very present, right? And then I catch myself trying to, like, imagine what's going on here. I catch myself like writing and I don't want to because I'm bad. I'm a bad writer. And then I I just I just shut up about the sun. I get I get some water or something and I go back to the office and I sit down. And then um there's an there's a window behind me and in the window behind me suddenly the sun has dipped into the view of into my view through the window. And clear as a bell in my head is the text only the sun knows what I really look like. And I just thought that was the coolest thing. Yeah. And, like, because, I mean, I'm having this day where, like, I'm questioning all this stuff about, what you know, this job that I have and, like, all this stuff. And 
and it's just like to hell with all that shit. Only the sun knows what I look like. Like whatever that means to anybody, um, I just okay. think, yeah, it's cool, you know. So I just want a poster that says only the sun look, only the sun really knows what I look like, and I'm gonna make it, you know. And I have um, I have eight other ones that I really like, and they all have their own stories and stuff. And like, I'm just gonna make these posters and and make a project of it. That sounds really interesting. I look forward to that. Um, okay, I have an, we have another question. Mm -hmm. um, you've spoken about being in a web, and now you speak of whole universes in Twitter. Mm -hmm. Is there an element of tapping into pre-existing systems or networks that is an important part of your process or ideology as an artist? How do you see yourself contributing to such webs, as you might call it? I think this question is so right up your alley. Go. <laughs> Wait, repeat the last part for me, the last part of the sentence. That you just How said. do you see yourself contributing to such webs as you might call it? Oh, okay. So, it's about, so the first part of the question is, is there an element of tapping into pre-existing systems or networks that is an important mm -hmm. part of your process or ideology? Mm -hmm. And the second part of the question is, how do you see yourself contributing to those pre-existing systems, networks, webs that you've been talking about with the Twitter, with the idea of the web in terms of medium. You, you do seem to be using a lot of the same kind of language. Mm -hmm. And I think, so I think the question is, is that an accident or do you actively think about um, webs and networks as part of your ideology and as part of your process? Well, Okay, so um, so I just so as you were speaking there, I remembered a couple of um, little tweets that um, that again I didn't write right, but and that's why I feel comfortable repeating them. So there was one that said um, one said um, one said we never stopped creating the world, and um, another one said um, you never stop having ancestors, and um, like I can tell you, there's times when I'm like online and I like. I, there's nothing going on with me. I'm dead. I'm like out of energy and whatever. I'm I'm reading somebody's tweets or I'm just on Twitter, and suddenly I have something to say. Suddenly there's like something in me that like just got woken up. Just like this transfer of energy that just happened, right? Um, so the question is about these pre-existing. Um, well, did I hear it correctly? Like this pre-existing. I mean, you repeated lots of times. These pre-existing like um, webs or, or like networks. systems. Cool, mm -hmm. right? And I think on many levels, like that's what we're in. Like that's what the world is, right? Of course. So like, um, so yeah. So when I, like, I mean, let me try not get too excited. But what I'm saying is, no, get excited, get excited. <laughs> and I absolutely think that um, that's 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 how I think the best stuff comes about because it's not. Um, it's it's when you kind of t tap into the way that the person uses exactly. When you kind of like find yourself. Um, to a pre-existing system or network. Yeah, and then you realize yourself as simply, simply um, the drop of water um, at the end of the leaf, right? Yeah. And um, all of this is going on. All this stuff is happening. The end, all the rain is falling. All the trees are growing, and you are the drop of water at the end of the leaf. And that's exactly what it feels like. And um, yeah, I think that yeah, that says it. That that I like that. That says it. Okay, and then the second part of the question, which is, how do you contribute? Um, how do you see yourself contributing to those webs, those systems, those networks, um, pre-existing or, or or otherwise? Because I guess what we're saying here is that they are all in a way pre-existing. Mm -hmm. So, so, so like, you, what's your role you see in all of that? Well, so um, all right. So I think about that a lot, right? And like, since um, a lot of my friends and a lot of like my mentors are these older. People and their concerns are kind of all, you know, very much that the whole place is going to shit and like what we're going to do about it. Um, this question comes up a lot, you know, like how do you see yourself contributing? What are you doing? Well, last year for a long time, um, one mantra that I was working with a lot, um, that just one of these things that just came up. With, it said um, it was just deliver freedom by example, and then for me that puts me that puts me into a perspective that I enjoy a lot because all I need to do now is express myself. All I need to do is be what I want to be and um, and, I, and, I, and I see that as adding, you know, I am what I have to give. So all my, my only responsibility now is to be and um, that's not a small responsibility to be, to be, to be yourself and to do the things that you want to do and to, you know, whatever it means. And, um, and it kind of liberates me from having to have anything to teach or to show or, you know, it just, um, 
the only thing I have to do is is be myself and you know deliver freedom by example. That's how I see it, and that's what I that's kind of a perspective that I enjoy. Yeah. No, I I think it is valuable a valuable one. Mm. Um. Well, we are pretty much finished with our with our time here, and I think okay. that was the last of our questions. Okay. So. Thank you so much, Rodell, for joining us. Thanks, you too, Nicole. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks for, for talking to me on this Sunday afternoon. Again, thank you so much to all the donors who have contributed so far. Oh, yeah. Thank, thank you yes. very much. Thanks to all the people who made this um, project happen because it's going to happen. And, like, shit, man, like, this is going to be cool. Oh, it's, it's at 34, 35 now. We've over, we're over the goal now. We have more money than we need. Oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I just want to tell you again, um, thank you to everyone who is tuned in. We have, um, um, and the conversation is going to be archived on the NLS YouTube channel. And as Rodel and Nicole just stated, we are at the goal now for the for, for Kuno wow, That's fantastic. That's cool. Great. And um, yeah, so we look forward to um, to working together and um, having the project realized over the next couple of months it's going to be a blast and it's going to be quite an experience to share with everyone thanks for joining in and uh, have a great Sunday yes thank you Nicole thank you Rodel thanks Deborah <laughs> all right bye 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 bye